Hi, I'm Paweł Spechalski and if you are into building your own electronic devices with the help of the microcontrollers, for example with Atmega based Arduinos or STM32 and you still do not know what ESP ESP32 is, then this video is definitely for you. Please bear in mind that the topic of the ESP32 is maybe not the freshest topic in the world because the board itself, the, the chipset itself appeared on the market four years ago because somewhere around 2016, but the amount of the possibilities and the developments that were put into this board and how cheap and available they are and which incredible functions they really do offer is just like almost mind-blowing. To be honest, I always like to create me something with the Arduino because, well, it's cheap, it's there, it's easy, it's simple and there's a lot of libraries. However, well, however, one at one point I discovered that the, all the Atmega Arduinos clones, okay, clones of the hardware, well, they really kinda suck. Not too many serial ports, not too many flash, not too much RAM, everything is so bloody complicated when you try to build something more computationally requiring from from the board and if you for example want to connect this to the internet somehow then the problem starts to amplify yes i know that uh, for example nowadays from the arduino you can buy those new fancy with the samd architecture but they are kind of like expensive expensive and if you compare the expensiveness of those boards with the fact that you can get the esp32 with the wi-fi yes with the wi-fi with the bluetooth and for example with the installed uh, lora module running at 868 megahertz for really long range communication for around 10 bucks maybe 15 if you add the oled to it then it kind of like yeah, you see there is a difference. And with ESP you do not only get the internet co connectivity out of the box, you also get a goodies like for example three serial ports out of nowhere, four SPI, am I correct? Um, yes, for SPI buses, you can get uh, two I2C buses, you can get the uh, SD card driver out of uh, Nowhere. 16 PWM outputs, yes they are software PWMs, but still PWM outputs and many 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 other cool features like for example 36 GPIOs, not every single one can be used as an output and the input, but this is a completely different, uh, different topic and all of that for like 3 bucks and you know it kind of like really start to wonder maybe this is the real uh, the real way to go forward. And to make things even more interesting, all the ESP32s come with 160 megahertz clock, yes, more than 500 kilobytes of RAM, yes, and two cores, yes. Then they are running the uh, real-time operating system with two cores uh, and you can have two things running at once on them and everything is there. And by the way, you can program this thing with everything you want because it, it will run Arduino. Yes, you can flash Arduino and program with Arduino. Not the program Arduino, but the an Arduino environment. And uh, you can do use C, just program everything with C just like you wanted. You can use Python and probably Node.js and everything, everything, because the power that lies inside of the ESP chipset is kind of like massive. They are not perfect. They are not perfect because, for example, majority of them lacks any flash memory. So if you want to have a place to store your code, you have to have the board and the board has to have external SPI, SPI connected flash memory. But Still, 3, 10, 15 bucks, okay, 20. Uh, probably the most expensive ESP32 board uh, I found is for like 25 bucks, but this one has the power management, ESP32, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, of course, OLED display and a LoRa module and also a GPS connected and a, a Lithium 18650 holder in there so like come on it's like almost a full-blown device that you can do whatever you want with this and the sky is the limit so what we're gonna do later in this video later in this video i will show some of the examples of the boards that i have 
here not everything because for example i do not have on me the example of the simplest one without the oled display i have no idea where i used all of them uh, probably every time i just need um, something running a microcontroller i just put the esp32 over there and from my stack of probably five or six i got zero and i have no idea where the rest is or maybe they broke who knows and uh, and yeah and in the future there also be a video how to start your adventure with esp32 and arduino environment and this is really cool okay so um let's see what i do have on my workbench today let's begin our adventure with the esp32 boards what i have over here is the probably the most interesting um value for price board that there is right now on the market which is the ESP32 in the 38 pin version which has USB micro USB connector on one side two buttons one of which is reset then the second one can be used just as the button on the board OLED display and on the bottom side we can see there is the Wi-Fi antenna, there is the flash memory, there is a voltage regulation for everything. It accepts 5 volts and this very interesting connector over here. Thanks to this connector, you can connect any LiPo or Lithium battery, Sing 1S, 3.7 volts that just fits somewhere here and have this thing running as the battery operated device because this thing has a charging unit. Every time you plug plug in the USB port, it will just charge the battery and then allow you to use this thing without being plugged for everyone. There is also a very similar board to this one which is lacking the OLED display, but uh, if you want to have this thing kind of like interacting with the, with the user, this is rather way to go. Of course, you can connect external OLED display to the version room 32, I think, without OLED, but the price difference is not that high, uh, not that big, and if you get yourself a few of uh, ESP32s and external OLEDs, you can just as well get one with the integrated. Bear in mind that the way of working with the OLED can differ between boards. For example, some of them require you to keep a pin uh, digital uh, IO16 high to for the uh, for this to work some are uh, flipped and you kind of sometimes need a special versions of the library but nevertheless it works it also has enough flash enough memory and enough computational power to really run a small web server without any problems you can connect this thing to the internet there is really plenty of examples how to use wi-fi integrated on it make the request to a server get the data or just act as the server to have this thing really working together with your smartphone you just either connect to the same network or make access point of the ESP and everything is fine and then if this is not enough for you then if you want some kind of the connectivity between two ESPs for a longer range than longer ranges than the Wi-Fi or Bluetooth allows you to do there is this version and something like that there are of course more variants but those are the basically this thing with LoRa integrated. Here on the bottom side over here you can find the Semtech SX1278 or 6 I never remember which exactly and of course the antenna uh, on, on the pigtail LoRa connectivity so you can talk really for like incredible distances few kilometers at least if there is um, at least some elevation between the antennas and have uh, spread network of devices doing incredible stuff access to the LoRa mesh etc 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 really sky is the limit um, I'm currently using a lot of those devices for my project that uses Nina, INAF and ESP32 and LoRa I was using this for the local beacon I was using this also for the long-range radio system really sky is the limit there you can also get versions running on the 433 megahertz and I bet that quite soon there also will be the versions uh, with the LoRa module running on 2.4 gigahertz 
that will more or less allow you to build your own version of Immersion RC Ghost or FlySky FRM302. There are also kind of more advanced uh, versions because, for example, what I have over here is the ESP32 again, but equipped with the color LCD. If I plug the battery in, uh, let's wait, then ta-da, you see it's a color LCD. I hope it will be visible in the... Is it visible? Is it... Yeah, it's a color LCD. So if you only want to, you can make the color display. And this one, for example, should be out of the box programmed with the Python. But this is not, of course, not the only, only choice you have. There, there are also the versions of the ESP32 I do not have at hand. The first one was this form factor, but no, sorry this form factor but without the OLED display. There is also much smaller version called D1 or something like that, which has much less uh, GPIOs and uh, you cannot connect everything because the connections are just not broken out. However, those things are really like super simple, super cheap and small and you can put everywhere. There are also versions with the e-paper displays. There are versions with the LoRa OLED, GPS, power distribution system and uh, lithium holder. One more time, nothing on me, but I do own two of those. And for 25 bucks, come on, almost everything, everything you want. If you want to know what you can do with ESP32s and what kind of incredible hardware you can get, then AliExpress really has everything. You really type ESP32 and you'd only pick. And speaking of which, I will probably have to make some purchases right now because, like I said, I'm out of few versions on the, those boards. Bear in mind, the quality of them kind of sometimes can be disappointing. Uh, for example, all the versions with the OLED uh, installed, the LED cracks very easily and I have like a small box of two or three without the OLED because they just cracked and was not working. And I think that's all for today. I hope I got you interest in the ESP32 and when you will be thinking about the hardware to use in your next electronic project, you will think about that stuff because it's really amazing. For the price, wow, it's incredible how much you get. Okay. Thank you for watching, until the next one, bye bye!